The following video are the highlights from a debate held on October 29, 2007. It features the candidates for city controller. The November ballot includes myself, Mark Rodericus, running as a libertarian, and Democrat Michael Lamb. The event is held at St. James AME Church in City Council District 9. It's hosted by BPEP, the League of Women Voters, and a number of other organizations. And the moderator is Esther Bush. This is the only debate held. The media was not present. But let's take a look. And I am going to begin by asking each of you for a vote on Michael Lamb really should first, so I apologize for that. Um, and we can either continue to 
can go in this order or however you want to go. But the first question is, how will you help get the city in better financial standing? Should I go first? Right. Um, well, I think there are a number of things we need to do. As we talked about, um, the city controller's job is about auditing. It's about uh, having the fiscal controls that the city needs. One of the big problems we have in the city right now is that we, we don't really don't know what our fiscal situation is. You know, we have, uh, we're off, it's almost like, you know, in your family, you have a, you have a checking account. Um, imagine if everyone in your family had their own set of checks, but, but no, and, you know, and, and registered. But there was only one account, but and there was no communication between the members. You know, you couldn't operate that way. We that's that's in many ways the way the city works right now. Departments are operating on their own. There's really not a a sole, single, comprehensive fiscal uh, reporting system in in the city of Pittsburgh, so that we know for sure what our fiscal situation was. A few years ago, you know, we went to Harrisburg to try to bring about new changes to our tax structure here. And one of the problems we had in Harrisburg was we couldn't convince people in Harrisburg what our fiscal situation was because they didn't believe us, and they shouldn't have because of the situation we had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Michael says that the controller's job is about auditing. Well, if we look back, we've had Tom Flaherty was in the office for a while, and he did audits, but it really didn't help. You know, we've We've been mismanaged to the hill. We now have overlords on different sides. You know, I think the controller's job, and actually the overlords are going to be doing the audit. You know, so yes, yeah, so there are some fiscal responsibilities, and there are 60 people in that office. But for me, I think the job of the controller would be to sustain a discussion as to why and how the city really needs to operate. And that's about communicating with the residents on a block by block, on a group by group basis. And we don't get to have the teaching and the understanding of what's really happening down there. We don't have the light shining brightly on all these different fronts. So it has to be about putting everything on the internet, everything on the internet. It has to be about teaching and understanding and teaching ourselves how to get a grip on our city. Thank you. Next question. What do you think about mergers of the city and county? Uh, I, I, well, I support a uh, consolidation. You know, I believe that where the city and county are doing the same thing, we ought to be doing it together. Save money. Um, so, you know, and, and in many areas, the city and county aren't doing the same thing. I mean, the county doesn't have a fire department to the degree that the city does. They have a fire department at the airport, but that's about it. So there are some areas where, you know, I've always pointed, pointed to tax collection as a possibility. You know, right now, the county treasurer sends out a tax bill for your property tax. Um, you know, we could include the city's property tax bill on that bill, save not just the cost of the uh, of the mailing and everything else, but have the county collect that tax for us. I mean, that would save us a significant amount of money on the cost side um, and allow us to do that. Those kind of opportunities. I, you know, a lot of you know I ran for mayor a couple of years ago, and I made a lot of hay about uh, dog licenses. How silly as that is, we're still, we still are, have two different dog licenses here in Allegheny County. I mean, those kind of things we really need to combine so we can save money and really provide more, not only more efficient, but more effective services for the people here in the city. Yeah, I'm glad Michael raised the dog licenses. I've probably heard that hundreds of times in the past. And now we're going to talk about serving um, a post or a letter or a tax bill, save a little bit on postage, and there might be some economies of scale there. Yeah, but I think the next type place that we need to merge is to pull parks together and recreation and after school and things with kids together. So I would suggest that we use a model that they use in Illinois. In Illinois, I was a swim coach and I worked for the park district. That we take all recreation and after school off of Grant Street and put it into its own body, a Pittsburgh Park District. So I would pull out city parks pull out county parks and recreation, take over the after school activities in the school district, and then eventually merge it into suburban areas as well, so that we would then begin with the bad tax, and with the stadiums, and the teams, and, and then begin to really look at the authorities. In Chicago, they've taken the parking garages, and they've turned the revenues over toward the parks. The parking parks sort of works together, so there's a lot to be done, more than dog licenses and tax bills. What can be done to raise additional revenue for the city? This was asked several different ways. So, 
Again, what can be done to raise additional revenue for the city? This week, or recently, said that we should start taxing the ball teams, the hockey teams, the uh, a tax because they're using their a payment in lieu of taxes. You know that would raise a little bit of money. But how about if we just had the teams own their own stadiums? Now, I, I don't need them to pay as much taxes, but I'd rather them have the four hundred million dollars for the stadiums. So how about if we take the parking authority with all its garages and we liquidate it and we allow them to be sold? You know, we would need a parking department within the city to collect the meter maids and such like that. So there's thousands of properties that the URA owns. They're not doing us any good. We have to cut the grass, we have to maintain it. So there's a lot of liquidation that needs to occur and I'd start with the stadiums. They should be privately owned. I'm going to disagree with Mark on, on one point. First off, the parking authority. If, if the parking authority didn't own downtown parking garages, parking rates downtown would go through the roof. Uh, that's the only thing keeping parking rates uh, reasonable in, in Pittsburgh. Um, where I'd like to see us more focus on is, is, is the money we're leaving on the table right now. You know, I, I, I started my campaign talking about everyone paying their fair share. And I can tell you, if we look around the city, we believe that when you look at people who, are, who aren't paying the wage tax, who are living in the city, they're using a dummy address outside the city, people who aren't paying business taxes because they haven't properly registered their businesses in town, um, you know, we think there's a good $10 million that's being left on the table every year that we're not collecting. That's what auditing does, you know, and, and that's what the, what the controller's office does. Mark said that, you know, it, it, when, when Tom Flaherty was controller all these years, we, we audited and nothing, we still have nothing to gain for it. Well, the truth is we weren't auditing all these years. I've gone back now 17 years, and I've yet to find one year that we have audited six or seven departments or six or seven performance audits, and that's what we need to do, not just because it's good business practice, because the charter requires it, and it hasn't happened. We've got to change that. Another moment about the parking authority as far as the price will go. Uh, can, can I have a moment on that, the 30 second? Or? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Michael said the, the parking rates would go through the roof downtown. It, the parking authority, the parking authority was liquidated. But, you know, what's gone through the roof? You know, we're already the highest tax. You know, that's already through the roof. The rates in town are somewhat suppressed by the parking authority because they own so many. And then Jim Burlow can say, lay free parking for the whole month of December. But when you have that type of mentality, nobody is ever going to build their own private lot. PNC Bank expands on first side, they get their free parking lot. Lazarus got a free parking lot because they were able to do deals with the city and that's what kills us and throws things through the roof. Reading this correctly, I'm going to address the issues sized by Polar's report on stadium team tax accountabilities. Does anybody know what that is supposed to be? Yeah, I wrote that. I have bad Thank you. Learning. <laughs> Sorry, it's really bad. Help me out a little bit. If I can just ask the question. Uh, you know, the controller, the current controller, wrote a fantastic audit about implementation of the anti sweatshop ordinance. And the uh, stadium audit that just came out has phenomenal recommendations about what can be done uh, to, to get more out of those teams. And the uh, administration is ignoring it. I, I think they're ignoring those reports. So, other than just producing reports, what can the controller do to compel? Uh, the administration to, to take action based on, on the objective standard of reporting we expect. Well, they, you know, the, 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 the controller's strength and power comes from that function, comes from the audit function. You know, looking at, looking at issues, looking at, you know, I mean, we want to look at issues with respect to contracting in the city and, and in the school district, you know, because we do have school district audit functions as well. You know, we want to be able to look at those issues and make recommendations, but you're right. I mean, you have to be, have that holy pulpit, and you can't necessarily be in the pocket of the mayor, so to speak, because that's not going to work. You know, we have a situation, as you know, in this district, you have a terrible situation on city council. Where was the control to do that? You know, where were the audits done, you know, to, to ensure that money was being spent properly uh, in that situation? It wasn't being done. Um, so that, that, that's the role. That's the key role that the, that the controller provides. I'm the, I would disagree with you that I think the findings of the stadium audit were all that phenomenal because I thought they were just kind of uh, 
not much, but, uh, but, but, but the role of the controller has to be to get out there and, and not be uh, you know, the, the, in the mayor's pocket. And, and I guarantee you that that's where I'm going to be. There is no peer review on Grand Street because everybody is all in the same part. You know, I don't believe they're really willing to rock the boat. There should have been peer review within council from council president. There should have been peer review from the office. There should have been peer review from the city controller's office. Well, when, when scandal happens, you, know, you just need to follow the money. So we're not doing peer review. They're not rocking the boat. They're covering for each other. They're hiding up things frequently. And I think that's what some of the energy has happened with the, with the mayor's race, with a, an outsider or a Republican run. You know, I, I bring that as well in a sense of being a libertarian. We need to break one party nomination. So that's the first thing that I think that really needs to happen. I think the stadiums, we already addressed it as far as this, they should be owned by the teams and then they would be able to do it. Okay, what can be done to better control the dollars expended by the city's various, various authorities? Well, this is an area that I think we have to pay a lot of attention. Because right now, um, you know, we have we have the, like the URA, the Parking Authority, the um, uh, the, the uh, Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority. You know, we have to be able to audit those uh, those authorities, and I plan to do that. One of the things that you see now is each of these entities are operating completely on their own. Um, they they go out and buy separate computer systems. They have uh, they all have their own individual financial systems and reporting systems. They have their own a couple of them have their own pension systems. You know, we need to, while maintaining the autonomy of those authorities, be able to coordinate a lot of that administrative function uh, into the city so that we can have the city then charge back to those authorities for use of computer systems and, and financial reporting systems. That would not only help the city, but it would for better coordinate all of our efforts throughout, uh, throughout both the city and all the authorities. Yeah, I think that's a good contrast. So we need to maintain the autonomy of the authorities, is what Michael's saying. You know, I think we need to liquidate these authorities. You know, and that's what I would try to do, and that's what I would try to educate, that's what I would try to, to teach about, and that's what I would try to make discovery and have a sustained discussion about. Because control art, I wouldn't have the power to do that. But I would have the power to make that part of the conversation. The, the authorities don't need their own autonomy. There's no accountability. I, I've said years ago that all the authority board members, from Pat included, need to come up for retention votes, like we're going to be doing with the judges. Who picks these people, and why are they never held accountable in the election? You know, so we need some democracy in these authorities, and we need retention votes among the authority members. And if they've been there for four, five, six years, they should have higher rates of positive votes on the retention to keep those positions before they're eventually liquidated. Thank you. How will merging the city and county cut jobs, or will it cut jobs? And if so, how many do you think? But how do, would merging the Merging the city and county, would it cut jobs? And if so, how many? The, the jobs that are being done now, like especially the authorities, and that's where a lot of the jobs reside, would still be there in private sector elements, mostly. Um, I, I'm not in favor of necessarily cutting jobs. I just want to be able to um, shine a light on what's happening, who's doing it, what's being done. Crossing guards, for example. I think we cut crossing guards. I think that was a problem. I would rather empower crossing guards, hire three times as much. I think there's good value to that as far as our pedestrian life, as far as care of the cities. But I would make sure that they were able to write tickets. I would that they were able to call the principals with a cell phone that we provide and the radios, and they were able to interact with the, the police. So I'm not sure that the, the cutting of jobs is exactly right. Now, in the recreational things, sure, if we put it all in their own recreational body where there's a recreational governance, that would be um, splendid. We get a lot more volunteerism out of it. So and even with the Citizen Congress, I want to be able to bring more people into city government as far as volunteer work. I guess, you know, I, I'm, we need to address what we're talking about here, you know. Obviously, uh, if we were to take, if the city were to merge into Allegheny County, not, which is something I don't support right now, 
um, because I think it will just dilute the power of the city. You know, we, the city right now represents 25%. It's 25% of the people in Allegheny County. Put the city into the county, you're going to have basically 75% of the people in the suburban community dictating municipal policy mm -hmm. in the city of Pittsburgh. That's not a good answer for Pittsburgh. So, but, I, but I do think there are there are functional foundations that we should work for and realize that. You know, and, and you know, I'm in an office right now that's going to be merged into two other offices come the first of the year. And there will be savings. There will be job savings. Of course, my job will be gone and some others. Um, but, uh, but, but they expect that over the next two years that there will be about 10% manpower savings. So that, that, that's the model. I guess that's what, if that's what you're talking about. Thank you. As controller, how would your efforts result in more city services for the East End community? You know, this is one of the things I talk a lot about uh, in the spring, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit about it right now. I, you know, I believe that the controller's job, the, the biggest tool that we have is the tool of performance audits, where we can go out and see city services, see how they're being performed, and then make recommendations. Um, but sometimes audits tell you what we already know. You know. We know that some communities in this city get better service than others. Um, and what I hope to bring about is an, is an auditing format that will begin to address that so that we can, so that we can show with that, not just stories and anecdotes, but we can show with that that there are some underserved communities throughout the city, not just in the East but throughout the city of this city. That's what we need. We need to make sure that underserved communities begin to get the services that they have long deserved. And that's what I plan to do as city control. Thank you. The question is about more city services to the East End. I, right? Yes. Okay. I have two guiding principles, priorities. One is freedom, and one is the kids, the youth. So if I'm a controller, I'm going to look to build freedoms. And secondly, I'm going to be looking to build interaction and engagement with the youth. So I think our East End community interactions are going to skyrocket because we're going to do a lot more with the kids. We're going to get more access to the schools, and we're going to have um, more understanding as to how to play well with each other. So. <coughs> As a city controller, I would want to create a Citizens Congress. We would be able to have a place on Grand Street where we could go and organize and talk and discuss and sustain conversations. And I think from that, we'll be able to reach into volunteerism, reach into coordination, and be able to um, do much more. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about, in progress in my closing, about doing more with less. I think we need to do more with the less free, more. I'm going to ask one last question, and then I'm going to ask you to give a one-minute closing. This is the final question. In what ways can the city controller most affect the needs, aspirations, and concerns of the African American community? Yeah, freedom's at stake here. You know, with um, whether it's police brutality or whether it's the um, national ID card, or whether it's going to war fighting for and coming back blown up. You know, and as a libertarian, I am strong against the war. I am strong for personal liberties. You know, I don't like the idea of these cameras all around town. I want the cameras pointed at the politicians instead of the citizens. You know, so, um, and, and there's a layer of, of discussion about freedom and liberties that just doesn't happen now in history. And I think that hits at home for many people here. And, and that's where I stand as far as being a libertarian, being someone that's so different than the, um, the status quo. And you, do you want to make any additional remarks just specifically concerning the African American? You talked about the poor, but... Yeah, uh, freedom fits everybody. Okay. And when we are able to um, go to where we need to go based on um, our own choices. We'll be able to better ourselves without having a lot of red tape to cut through. And that's, that just encumbers our, our freedoms in many ways. Thank you.
Uh, let, me, let me talk about a couple specifics that uh, I know some people have addressed with me and things that we want to consider in the planning controller's office. Um, contract. So we both in the city and, and maybe even more so in the school district um, have real issues with respect to how contracts get awarded um, and, and the process that they follow. Um, underbidding contracts, <coughs> coming back to cost overruns and not having to go back to bid. And a lot of that has been done as a way to to avoid minority and women business uh, you know, requirements in these contracts. We want to take a look at that. You know, we, want to, we want to make some recommendations on stopping that kind of process and moving forward. Um, you know, a lot of you know that I'm involved, and, and Esther knows this, that I'm involved in an organization called A Plus Schools that is really focused on student achievement, and in particular, the elimination of the racial achievement gap in Pittsburgh Public Schools. So we are going to begin to do audits, actual performance audits, in the school district. Um, it hasn't been done. It hasn't been done in 20 years. Uh, we're going to start to do that so that we can really begin to provide, uh, uh, really have our, our school board focus on the issue of student achievement. Um, and lastly, you know, one of the things that I get uh, grabbed a lot, a lot is the issue of code enforcement in our community. Um, and whether that be, in, 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 obviously that's a citywide issue, um, but I hear a lot about it in the Romney African American communities um, so that we get people out there um, addressing these code enforcement issues in, in our communities. Thank you. And if we could have a closing statement from you first, Mark. You know, I went first in the Okay, that's fine. Mike, would you give your closing Absolutely. statement? Absolutely. Well, first, let me, let me thank EPEP and League of Women Voters and Student Voices and the League of Young Voters and uh, any other organizations that I did that I was part of this tonight. Esther, thank you very much for being here. Now, this is a great opportunity for us to get out. Uh, and really the first opportunity we've had to get out and talk uh, to the community just shows you what goes on when there's a marriage race so uh, people are more interested in. But uh, it's been a great opportunity for me to come out and, and I'm glad to do it. You know, we, we need to begin to change the direction of this city um, and certainly change its financial direction. You know, I have uh, worked for a long time, as I said before, in trying to improve and create uh, a better government. Government of integrity, professionalism, fairness. You know, government that really addresses our community's needs in a superior way. And we really want to respond to this community. And, and our tool to do that, our fiscal audits, um, I'm ready to do this job. I'm the Democrat, uh, the nominee on uh, November 6th, 7th, whatever day it is. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Everybody can vote on November 6th. So, <laughs> um, it is more about than performance than it is about being kind. You know, and getting the numbers right is sort of important. So, but I, I would like to thank everybody. Tim, Sled, everybody in the, the church facilities. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, this is the lone debate for the citywide office, which is um, absurd. And democracy matters to me. And um, it, it's... Um, I'm also on the ballot in the city council race. There's no debates, and, um, and that's a shame. Um, with that in mind, I've prepared a DVD with the help of David Adams. Um, I would like everybody here to take one home. It gives you um, a good point as to what we're talking about. I'm glad Michael did bring up the schools. The controller has an important job with schools. Um, I've been a coach. Basically, I know that what happens in the city is much unlike what happens in the suburbs. And our kids are not able to compete on a day-in, day-out basis for that. And there's plenty to be done with the schools. I have more than 200 points that I'd like to address out of the schools and as far as performance, including the selling off of buildings, which I think is um, somewhat questionable. So thanks for coming out tonight for everybody, including my opponent. And um, I look forward to the next round of <laughs>